Hi, welcome to Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder. I'm Joy Mahone, and in this 101 tutorial, I'm gonna share with you my top 10 tips for sewing denim, which really is easy. Jeans or denim fabric are really just a modified pair of pants. They're not really in their own category or kind of off standing alone. Just with a few modifications of some tools you probably have, you can really create a pair of jeans that look store-bought. Now in our April edition of Wardrobe Builder, we shared a great video on how to go through sewing the Morgan pattern. Now you may not like this particular style of jeans and that's okay because in the second half of this lesson, I'm going to share with you how you can modify a jeans pattern or a pair of pants to the style of fit in jeans that you personally like. But check out this, this tutorial on the Morgan jeans. It really goes through the process of sewing jeans and you'll see a few of these tools in action. Well, let's jump into the top 10 tips. Number one starts with your fabric. You're gonna pick out a fabric for the look that you're going for and to correspond to the pattern that you are sewing. Or you might pick the fabric first and then pick a pattern that matches. But remember, that there are different weights and textures of denim fabric. And denim fabric is really made from a weave that's called twill. And it has those little ridges that you can easily recognize. So your denim or twill fabric, whatever you want to call it, will have some that are the traditional heavy, dark blue jean material. You're gonna have others that have a different uh, print or a weave. And then you're gonna have some more fashion denim which tends to be a little, little more to the medium or lighter weight. So again, you can achieve entirely different look just simply based on the fabric that you choose. Now, the second tip is the grain. And grain is really important in sewing. Uh, it is how your, your pattern pieces hang on your body. Do they drape? Do they hang straight? Is there flow to them? But on a pair of jeans, Probably the number one complaint that I hear in regards to fit of jeans is that they twist. And this is a common issue that you hear just across the board, even in the sewing industry and manufacturing of jeans. People have pant legs that twist when they walk. And I've really discovered that there really are just two solutions to that. The first one, it could be a pattern issue. So we'll check that out in a moment. But the second one has to do with the grain of the fabric either being off grain or your pattern piece not being cut on the grain of the fabric. So take care to place your pattern piece with the correct grain of the fabric so that it hangs straight on your body. All right, number three is a really easy one, but sewers often forget to change your needle. And when you're sewing denim or making a pair of jeans, you want to use a jeans or a denim needle. Now my go-to default is a size 16. They go up to a size 18. So if you're working with some of those really industrial denim fabrics, then use that 18. You can also go down to a 14 if you're using some of the more fashion color and fashion forward denims. And there is a great selection in the Nancy's Notions website. So you can use the same fabrics that I use in my studio and in these lessons. So change your needle at least once, but using that denim needle is also going to help you prevent having broken needles, which if you use a smaller needle, you will break a lot of needles sewing your denim. So that's an easy fix for sure. All right, number four is templates. I love templates in my sewing. Um, I do them a lot and you'll see that when I teach fitting, but on denim or sewing a pair of jeans, Jeans feature pockets traditionally uh, and lots of different shapes and sizes of pockets. So what I do is trace the pocket pattern onto oak tag and then I cut around it and remove the seam allowance. You can iron oak tag and if you don't know what that is, it's like the material in a file folder, which you can actually use those as well. It irons fine and you're able to take your pocket material and place that on the template and fold 
fold the edges around the template and then you'll use the clapper, which we'll see in a moment, but you can press a nice, beautiful edge so that when you're taking that pocket and laying it on top of your jeans and you can stitch around it, you're gonna have beautiful edges that look nice and even. And remember, we want sewing and we want jeans that look professional really simple tool. You can also use a template when you're doing the fly stitching and any other areas where you want to be able to translate some markings to your pattern or use it as a stitching guide. All right, number five, we are going to talk about the Gina Majig or the hump jumper. Um, I've had students use pieces of cardboard, but the idea is that when you're sewing denim, it's a heavier fabric. And as you add layers and you create seam lines and top stitching, it gets thick. And a lot of sewing machines, when you put that under your presser foot, the presser foot, instead of being level, does this, which causes needle breakage and it causes skip stitches and you don't wanna break your machine and throw off the tension. So just by leveling out that presser foot, um, it really solves, that's a super easy thing to, to fix. So this is the big jig and I love this one because it has a long area. It's clear, so it might not be real visible for you here, but make sure you reference our full video on the Morgan pant. It's the April episode because you'll see this in use you're gonna slide this under your presser foot and it has a nice surface for the presser foot to rest on, keeping it level, preventing those skip stitches and uh, again, having great sewing results. All right, we're gonna jump into number six and that is using a clapper and a hammer. And no, the hammer is never just to hit our sewing machine if it's not sewing well. These tools help to release the fibers or relax them so that they are a little bit more flat. When you are ironing any garment that you want a beautiful crisp fold or edge finish, you want to remove the heat as fast as you can, but you also want pressure. So heat and pressure, and the faster you remove the heat, the better and more crisp of a finish you will have. So the clapper is a tool that conducts heat and it will do that for you. So you, you make a seam or you're, you're rolled hem and you iron it and then you press that down and it removes the heat and you have a beautiful finish. And again, it helps just to make that a little flatter. So if you're gonna sew over it again, it's not quite so difficult. The hammer will also aid in this a little further when you're sewing, again, your hem or anywhere where you've got multiple layers of Denim. Find something hard like the floor, a brick. Um, you can use like an old metal pan. I've had people do that. Um, just avoid your, your best dining room table. But when you sew a seam, you can hit it pretty hard and pound the fibers. And what will happen is that they will flatten out, which again makes it easier to then put that underneath your sewing machine. All right, number seven, we are going to use industrial or heavy duty notions, um, including scissors. You wanna make sure that you have a sharp pair of scissors to cut your denim so that your pieces are precise and accurate, but also you want things like a metal zipper, especially if you're working with some of the traditional and heavier weight denims. Those lighter weight nylon zippers just are not durable and they're gonna you're just they're gonna pull out and you're not gonna have a long wear with your garment and you'll be disappointed so the metal corresponds to the weight of the the denim or the fabric if you're using some of the lighter fashion fabrics you can probably go down a weight in your zipper but just again it's all about a recipe the right notion with the right fabric and that corresponds to things like buttons and the little rivets which make your jeans look store-bought little metal pieces and then of course your metal button that you would have on the fly front and the snap these are inexpensive and they're really easy to apply you'll use your hammer and simply poke a hole and then you're able to pound those through and you have a heavy duty closure. Again, jeans, if depending on how you fit them, they're a heavy duty fabric and if they're fitting snug, you, you do not want a button that's gonna pop off. So those heavy duty fixtures are going to be your friend. Again, reference our episode uh, in Wardrobe Builder so that you can see me actually applying those to the pants. All right, well, we are gonna jump into number eight, which is 
dyeing your fabric. Now this is less about construction and more about fun and aesthetics, but did you know that you can dye your fabric in your washing machine? You could do it in your bathtub, your kitchen sink. Uh, just make sure you read the directions, but this is just a regular writ dye that you can get at your big box store. There are actual beautiful garment dyes available, but you can dye and change the colors. You can get specific dye removers that they don't actually add a color, but they just remove. So if you like things like the stone wash or some of those finishes that you see where the, the shades of the denim um, or an ombre effect, then you want to remove dye. Now that's a lesson in itself for me to actually show you how to use it, but there there's just so many options available. So if you see things out there that you like, you absolutely can replicate that. And believe it or not, most of those fun finishes in jeans actually all started as a plain, boring pair of denim that then had that finish applied. So you can be creative with your the color on your denim. All right, well, number nine kind of goes back to our pocket template, using reinforcement stitches or bar tacks. Remember, a pair of jeans or denim really is that heavy duty garment. And so when you're sewing on things like a pocket, a zipper opening, you want to make sure you use a bar tack and uh, reinforce any edge of the garment that may have some sort of resistance. So a pocket, for example, if you're putting your hand in your pocket, you are adding resistance where that pocket potentially could pull away from the garment. So when you bar tack the edges down and then you put your hand in there, it helps to reinforce that. So those heavy duty stitches, make a sample so that you can test your, your thread, your needle, and your fabric so that when you do sew your garment, there's, there's no guessing. Well, we're down to tip number 10, which is a really fun one for me, and that is using my little handheld sander. Now you can use an emery board or like a fingernail file. You can just purchase a piece of sandpaper. I happen to have this little hand sander because I like to do woodworking projects uh, and these are inexpensive. So you know when you hem a pair of jeans and they have that really um, uh, different finish on the bottom of the hem, you can literally just sand the finish off of your jeans. You can put holes in your jeans. Yes, sometimes people pay to have jeans that have holes in them where well, you can make them yourself. Um, so using some of those tools like that um, really, again, Again, just help customize our jeans. Well, really, as I mentioned, jeans are just a modified pair of pants. It's all about just kind of a few modifications with the machine and your thread and your fabric. But the second component in jeans and really having a pair that you love, which is priceless, is understanding the fit. Now you may start with a pattern that maybe isn't your favorite style of jeans, but it's just a starting point. We're going to jump over to the cutting table here and we're going to look at how you modify things like where the folds are, um, the shape of the pant leg, how the crotch fits, and just different styles of jeans that you see so that you have the tools you need to really get the look that you want. All right, well, now that we know how to sew a pair of jeans successfully, we want to address the issue of fit. Now, there is a 101 tutorial video in Wardrobe Builder that is on how to fit a pants pattern. So I'm not going to show you today how to take your pant pattern and make it bigger or smaller to fit your body. What I want to show you here is how you modify that pattern that should be fitted to your body, how you can modify that to create any look and style in a pair of jeans. Now in our April edition of Wardrobe Builder, we featured the Morgan non-stretch jeans pattern, which is basically just a, a, a traditional fit jeans, it hugs the body, there's not a lot of flair in there, not a lot of style modification. It's just a great foundation pattern for creating a pair of jeans. But did you know you could take this exact pattern and make it look like any style of jeans out there? And that's what I want to show you. I'm going to be creating some of the various jean styles on these smaller half scale patterns, but just know that you can take your pattern pieces and shrink them down 200% or you can make copies of your full size pattern 
or just trace something like this out on paper. But we are going to start not in any particular order, but what I'd like to do is kind of evaluate uh, the leg and then how the pant pattern might interact on the body. So we'll use my Sharpie here and I'm going to trace this pattern piece kind of as is. So when we look at our pant pattern piece, we have an area on the pant that is the abdomen that fits that fuller tummy, the hip area, which fits wherever the hip line is, the thigh area. And this one's really important if you want some of those wrinkles that we saw in some of our images. The thigh area on a traditional pattern, unaltered, usually falls about an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches below the fork of the pant, okay? So there's a line right there on the pattern. Uh, so we're gonna play around with that in a minute. And then of course the knee, and my little pattern here is cut a little shorter, so we would probably have a little bit of extra length on the bottom to have it look more like a natural shape of pant. So I'm gonna remove this here just so you can kind of get a feel for what we're, we're doing uh, on the pant. And then of course, this is the front crotch curve. And we're gonna talk about the jagging style first. The jagging pant is one that mimics the body and is meant to fit tight. We saw an image of that. This pattern right here is really meant to reflect a pant pattern that fits our body. There's some movement ease in there. It's not tight, but it's also not much larger than our body. So this really is reflective of how the Morgan jean pant pattern should fit us. Now, some of you are gonna say, I don't like the style. I don't like tight fitting. It's too young looking. Um, whatever your reason. So we want to look beyond just what's on the pattern cover. I really recommend, especially in pant fitting, that you make a pair of pants that is basically a replica of your body. So it doesn't have to be tight, but it should pretty much just skim over your body and use that as your base pattern for designing any design. So here again, this is our, our just our natural fitting pattern. So if we were going to make a jagging pattern, what would happen is we would do some modifications to the pattern. We are going to ask ourselves, do we have fabric that has stretched to it? If there is fabric that has stretched to it, then chances are we are probably going to reduce some of the width of the pattern. So I've got a little arrow here. And then the other thing is we're going to contour closer to our body. How we achieve that, it can be done simply by pinning in the pattern and just removing the excess really in a fit sample. So that one's a little bit easier to achieve. There are jagging patterns out there which are specifically designed for knit fabrics. Now, there are reductions that you can take on a knit pattern. I won't be able to cover those here, but basically what it does is it removes fullness and a little bit of length. But here we are going to emulate that by drawing a line and having that come in. This would be our knee area right there. And if you see that black line, how that's much smaller than the red line, that would be the jagging. It's going to literally match our body. There's no ease. There'd be seam allowance, but really that's an easy modification. So there's not a whole lot that really goes into that, but you can again fit your, your patterns just by um, reducing some of that bulk and just contouring to your unique shape and your curves. All right, well, let's move on to another one, which is going to be, um, and let's move our paper over a little bit. Let's talk about how do we achieve a boot cut design. So we're gonna start here, we're gonna make another one, and we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna kind of work our way up in some of the adjustments that we are doing to the jeans pattern. So a few of these are gonna seem very simplified. And I'm assuming right now that you are starting with a pattern that you've already made a fit sample and it already fits your body. 
before you do any styling of your jeans, that's what you want to do. So it's very important that um, your starting pattern already fits you. Okay, now I just kind of eyeballed that. You can use a ruler, but let's look at the boot cut. The boot cut jean really is a jean that fits the body to about the knee area and then it flares out. Now, some people will have it contour in a little at the knee so it might be a little more fitted in the knee area and then it flares out all right kind of like a bell bottom so i mean you can make that however full or narrow that you want again not a hard stylized design it's literally just reshaping the leg of the pant and again i cannot emphasize enough starting with a pair of pant pattern that already fits your body uh, the one thing we want to talk about in pant fitting and I cover this in our other 101 tutorial, is that we have a plumb line that goes down our body, uh, down the center front. And we also have a grain line on our pattern. So that grain line should hang parallel to the plumb line. But what's really interesting is that our pant pattern needs to match where our body mass is. So for example, if you're really hippy or you have hip bones that stick out here, you might have more pant pattern on this side of the pattern and less over here. So if you are adjusting the fullness of the pant leg, for example, you might remove more. Let me remove from this one and then we'll hold this up, all right? So if you're doing a J gain, let's look at that. You might remove more from the inside and you might remove less from the outside so that you're keeping that space in the pattern because you have more leg over here. So your pattern is all about balancing and making this match the proportions on your leg. And so any of these design changes that you do should also correspond to the shape of your body. All right, so those are just, easy style silhouette changes, nothing really difficult right there. Let's talk about the rise of the pant and then the crotch curve wrinkles that um, a lot of people really like. And as I mentioned, it's funny that that is a fit issue in some designs and it's an aesthetic or creative issue in others. All right, so we're gonna just trace our pant here so you can kind of see the outline of the pant. Okay, so what we wanna do is we want to create wrinkles in this area of the pant. So how do we do that? We want to shorten that area of the pant. Now, if we shorten the hem way down here at the bottom, it's just, we're gonna have cropped pants. And if we take it off the waistline, then we're just gonna have a cropped top of the pants. We really want to reduce the area that falls near the fork of the pant. So what you're gonna do is take a reduction where you cut across that area and literally shorten it. And now you are creating a, an intentional fit issue that causes your fabric to scrunch in that area. Equally, if you happen to want fullness in an area of your pant pattern, cut across and spread it, and then you're gonna add length. And there's more thought into that. Check our 101 videos on pant fitting, but right now we're intentionally doing this to create that style. It's super easy to achieve. If you like that look and you want more of that to fall down in the knee area, you can additionally do that there. Okay, so now this brings us to a similar technique, looking at the rise of the pant. Now the rise of the pant really is something that happens in that same fork and really in the back of the pattern piece. I'm just featuring the front right here, um, but you will see styles of pants where they cut off the top of the pant. So it's a low rise and really it's just a cropped pant. Now um, it can be done a couple ways. The easiest is to cut in the upper area of the pant and simply bring this down, this shortens it. But this doesn't always work because you're lowering darts in the upper area of the pattern 
and you might be fuller in that area and the darts are also not going to match your body. So avoid that adjustment if, if you're trying to stylize the pant. Instead, what you want to do is you want to fit your pant to your body, to your natural waistline. So then you have all the, the darts and fitting elements match your body. And then you're going to go to your pattern and determine, um, you know, maybe you want a, a low arc or a lower center front. You're going to determine the style line. We know that this area already fits the body. So you don't need to reset these darts. This already fits this particular contour of the body. Now it, there's a bias. So if we cut the pattern here, all right, we now are cutting on an area that has some bias or some stretch because we're, we're, we're off grain and it's, it's fine. It's not going to hurt anything, but we have to recognize there can be some stretch or give there. So we want to interface this uh, and stabilize it with some twill tape or interfacing right away. And then we're going to put a waistband or determine how we're going to finish off that edge to stabilize it. If you get some stretch in that area, you may decide that you want to pin fit in a few little darts. So I'm not going to say that you never will put a dart there, but if you stabilize it and you're working with a pattern that already fits you, you shouldn't need to translate those darts. So this is a low rise or a cropped top, not a low rise pant. All right. Well, let's see. We've covered the boot cut. We've covered the jegging. And you can see that some of these modifications, they're really simple. So you can apply them to any pattern. Um, and what I would love is that any of you that have specific styles that you want to see patterned, let us know. And maybe we will make some additional style videos on how to create your own custom jeans. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder 101 tutorial lessons. Well, I hope you had a great time learning some really easy tips that are going to ensure you have professional results when you're sewing denim and making your own pair of jeans. And I hope you have a great understanding now of the jeans pattern and how you can really modify any jeans or pant pattern to achieve the look and style that you want in your own custom fitting jeans. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you're notified anytime a new video is available. And we will see you next time in another Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder.